Leadership is dangerous and risky work. Uh, Mike Hogan, you live dangerously. <laughs> if leaders often take us to places where we're not ready to go, uh, Mike, you aren't unequivocally a leader. <laughs> um, Mike, Michael Hogan, Dr. Michael Hogan, Commissioner of New York State Office of Mental Health, uh, came to us in 2007 from Ohio and Connecticut served as commissioner of mental health in both states. He earned a national reputation as chair of the President's New Freedom Commission, which I think you all know, um, a mental health that was in 2002, 2003. We're in 2011, right? Just checking. The report of the commission had a title that was a harbinger of the work that, that Mike is doing in New York. It was called Achieving the Promise, Transforming Mental Health Care in America. In a cover letter to the report to the, of, the, of the commission, Dr. Hogan communicated to the president these words. The commission finds that recovery from mental illness is now a real possibility. The possibility of the new freedom initiative, a life in the community for everyone, can be realized. That was in 2003. Our commissioner asserted that time has long passed for yet another piecemeal approach to mental health reform. The commission recommends a fundamental transformation of the nation's mental health approach to mental health care. Commissioner Hogan closed the letter to the president in 2003. We look forward to the work ahead to make recovery from mental illness the expected outcome from for a transformed system of care. Radical at the time, but if you think about it, the Commission's work has clearly moved our nation closer to that ideal. Not fast enough, maybe, but it's moved us closer. Mike, you could have hardly known back then, 35,000 feet, which I know you like to talk about, in 2003, that you'd be with feet on the ground in New York right now in 2011 helping us transform our system. And he's, God knows he's fought many battles in New York in his four years as commissioner. New York can be a very hard place. Um, our community has been supportive of some, participant in some, and I guess adversaries in others. No major reform battle, though, has been more important to our community than the battle around the behavioral health carve out. An interim stage, we understand, to the road to managed care. The designation of the BHO, the Behavioral Health Organization, the two-year period we have is a significant opportunity for our, for our sector, and we thank you for that. You led us and you led many people for us to have that, that opportunity to be actors and agents in shaping the community of services and the future of our system. We move toward your vision that you talked about eight years ago integrated, personalized, recovery-oriented system of care that give adults hope about the future, capitalize on their resist or resilience, and often offer them a chance to the rightful place in the community, with a home, a job, and a family of choice. And for children and youth, the vision promotes prevention services and family supports that would offer young people a tangible way to avoid a lifetime of disabilities, and that's really important. We know that the road ahead is a little bumpy. It's not a straight line. It's got about curves, obstacles, but we want to join you. We are joining you, uh, joining a number of forms uh, in creating solutions that are responsive to people with mental illness and behavioral health challenges. So Vaclav Havel, we like to quote people here, right? So great playwright, poet, change maker. He said, vision is not enough. It must be combined with venture. It's not enough to stare up the steps. 
You must step up the stairs. Or I'd like to say another way, because I'm a big jazz fan. Uh, Charlie Parker said, uh, don't be afraid, just pick up the instrument and play. Um, so we know that you're running up those stairs, and we're gonna run, walk with you, jog with you, run with you, because of time frames. I think we do have to actually run up the stairs, and we're playing the music with you. The coalition's members welcome the opportunity to, to walk with you. And we, we, you have labored in our field for many, many years as government official, policymaker, and a thought leader. And so Commissioner Michael Hogan, I am very proud to represent the Coalition of Behav Behavioral Health Care Agencies in presenting you with our 2011 Leadership Award for outstanding leadership and commitment to improving the lives of people with behavioral health disabilities, for helping to promote their recovery, and for dedicated efforts to preserve and nurture New York's community behavioral health sector. Thank you. So the, it, I've, I've never gotten quite used to this uh, uh, tradition uh, in, in New York of uh, awards to people for doing their jobs, which is sort of how, how I think of this. But it, it really is true that you know, some people do jobs better and some worse and, and some with, uh, you know, with partnership and passion and some, uh, and some not so much. So uh, I really do uh, appreciate that. It's extraordinary to be with a group of people that's uh, that's represented here and I'll, I'll miss many but I just want to mention in particular my wife Barbara who is able to be with me tonight so that's a that's a Uh, it is always a, a, a treat uh, to talk with or, or work with uh, Linda Gibbs. Wicked Smart uh, does come to mind, and a combination of a sharp intellect and a, and a warm heart is uh, pretty hard to beat. Uh, Linda Rosenberg, another New Yorker who is uh, now, I think, the most effective advocate for mental health in the nation, uh, uh, you know, commuting down to uh, the city. Um, uh, the wonderful people that I have the opportunity to work with in the Office of uh, Mental Health. And just to mention uh, Anita and Bruce and Lloyd and, and Bob Myers and many others, it's the best uh, leadership team in a state mental health agency in the country, and I've worked in most of them, so I know where, you know, <laughs> where off I, uh, uh, I, I speak. And the, the wonderful people that are part of your uh, community, Phil and, and Donna, uh, Jonas, your past president, I congratulated P Peter Campanelli and his reelection to the National Council's uh, uh, board. So this is a this is a uh, qu quite a quite a family. So it, it is just good to be with you. In addition to everything else, I, I've been thinking a lot about the um, that uh, supposedly uh, Chinese curse that goes, it "May you live in interesting times," and uh, it was on my mind so much that I went and looked it up in, in Wikipedia, which is how you look stuff up these days. And it, it turns out, according to Wikipedia, that it's not a Chinese curse at all, but it's probably of British origins. And it's, it's not just a one you know, thing curse. It's not just may you live in interesting times, but it goes with two other curses. And uh, the, the, the second of those is may all your dreams come true. You know, so who would have thought that with mental health parity and healthcare reform, you know, all of our dreams have come true, and now we're, you know, we're tossed into this tumultuous uh, environment. And th the last uh, curse is, may you come to the attention of the government. <laughs> or, or, or sometimes it said, you know, powerful people. But, you know, who would have thought that uh, our little world would uh, have come to the attention of the government in such a remarkable way? Uh, remarkable way. So this is, as, as you've already said, and I, I, Donna, I really like the, uh, the quote. So Donna quotes from a leader in change and a writer about change who happens to be a psychiatrist, um, and, uh, and from Vaclav Havel, and, and then, of course, from Bird. Um, and uh, I, I can remember going to Ohio. Um, I used to say all the time, because I like jazz myself, uh, that, well, on this particular issue, we're going to fake it. And that made people a, a little bit you know, it was a very structured, organized team that I was working with and safe. And they thought that faking it meant like just make it up as you go along, not understanding what improvisation in jazz is. Well, you, you know what the, you know, what the structure of the music is and you're gonna work off uh, that. Well, we're in an environment where we really are faking it right now in that best sense of the world. We gotta find our way 
uh, based on uh, that combination of heart and, uh, and, uh, and mind. And I also think at some level that two of the, uh, several of the things that have been brought together here already um, are great examples of what will test us and what needs to remain our, uh, our, our goal. It, it occurs to me, Linda, that with the Mental Health Criminal Justice New York City, New York State uh, uh, Task Force, that we avoided a lot of harm, but we didn't yet do enough good. We, we identified in that process that these individuals who had bad things happen or who did bad things were all people who had gotten disengaged from care. And we've made some efforts to fix that, but we haven't really fixed it yet. If we get this right, this next stage that is so, you know, that is so scary in some ways, it ought to create a way for us to actually stay connected to them and to work with them and to facilitate their uh, recovery uh, as well as improving uh, public safety. And you know, I was sort of touched that you reached back to the uh, uh, to the New Freedom Commission report. That the, the letter I actually wrote myself. It was one of like three things that I, I contributed. Mostly the the uh, the work of the commission was uh, was orchestration. But this notion of transformation toward recovery that is what our challenge is right now. You know, we the mental health community were lucky to have a president ask us for that. We were, uh, it was not so lucky that it was a Republican president who probably didn't intend to do that much with the results. <laughs> and of course the good guys who are there now, they, they can't do anything with stuff that got done on a Republican time, so. <laughs> but really, w w that, uh, that report was primarily written for us. And uh, so th that, uh, these notions of uh, 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 keeping our uh, I set on that horizon that focuses on recovery, that focuses on resiliency, that focuses on helping people achieve the positive changes they want in their lives as opposed to the things that they do when they're desperate and when we've failed them. Uh, somehow we'll get through this together and that's what we'll achieve. Thank you.